is about a better subject. How do I get a better subject? I'm going to try to answer that. Uh, it's a very uh, holistic process. I photograph Indians, Montana Indians, for about a year now. About six months ago, I started working on a series of photographs of an Assiniboine Indian that turned out to be about as good as any photograph that I've ever done. Here's how it started. A friend of mine, uh, named Norman, who is a really good wildlife photographer, like up in Yellowstone National Park, came into the gallery one day, knew that I'm photographing Indians. And he said, hey, I, I met an Indian out in uh, Paradise Valley, which is about a half hour drive from here. And uh, he might make a good photograph. And Norman is a good enough photographer that I pay attention to what he says. His, if he said this guy might make a pretty good picture, I uh, value his photographic sensibilities enough to think that maybe this guy will make a pretty good picture. That's how it started. Don LaRock, uh, his Assiniboine name is uh, Rattling Thunder, from Fort Peck, which is uh, the uh, official name, I believe, is the Assiniboine and Sioux Tribes, Fort Peck, Montana, Northeastern Montana. He is a, he's a sculptor, he works in Travel Team Marvel. He is a sun dancer, and has the scars to prove it. If you know anything about Sundancer and you meet an Indian who says he's done the Sundance with piercings, if that doesn't cause you to have a lot of respect for this person, then something's wrong with you. The first brick wall was me going out there and talking to him. That's an uncomfortable situation to walk up to a total stranger and say, I want to take your photograph. Uh, it is even more um, intimidating uh, when that person is uh, an Indian. When I'm photographing an Indian, what I see and what I want to portray is pride, dignity. If I'm photographing a male Indian, uh, I see a warrior component. Uh, I see sorrow, and if you know anything of the history of uh, Indians and, uh, for lack of a better word, white government back in the late 1800s, uh, uh, sorrow uh, about the loss of their lands, about the loss of Buffalo. And I also see uh, as a product of that same period of time in more recent times, uh, a bit of distrust of me. And, and all of those things I want to show in the picture. I think it was Calvin Coolidge who said, Pers persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. I think I read that saying, uh, it has to be 50 years ago. And, and so here I am 50 years later, and I'm telling you that if you're not persistent and determined, don't be a photographer. You'll go sit on the couch and watch TV. You won't get there. Continuing on with persistence and determination. And again, this is in the process that I'm describing of photographing Don LaRock. He is a competitive dancer in a recent house fire, all of his regalia was burnt. Don and I are having a good conversation. He's willing to be photographed. Uh, he is beginning to turn out to be a really good guy. So he told me about a website, Crazy Crow Trading Post, which is actually pretty in interesting. The competitive dancers, Indian competitive dancers of today, 
buy a lot of their regalia equipment from this website. They have things like uh, breastplate kits, uh, choker kits, eagle feathers, uh, not really because eagle feathers are illegal. You cannot buy eagle feathers. You cannot sell eagle, eagle feathers. It's my understanding that for an Indian to take an eagle feather, they have to file with somebody for a permit that takes something like up to 10 years to get. What the Crazy Crow Trading Post has is fake eagle feathers, hand painted, you know, anyway, like that. I was thinking about that and, one, and as I was thinking forward to, to a final photograph, one of the strong visual elements in the uh, Indian photographs of say uh, Curtis is the breastplate that they wear, the horizontal bone uh, things that are all um, uh, woven together in a pattern, very strong, uh, 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 what should I call it, two-dimensional element in the picture. What the Crazy Crow Trading Post has is they have the beads and the everything that you need to make up the regalia for a competitive dancer. So when I came back from visiting with uh, Don LaRock the first time, I, I ordered a breastplate kit. I didn't order any eagle feathers because Don told me very politely, but very pointedly, he is not going to wear a fake eagle feather. So that problem remained, but I ordered the breastplate kit. So there's the first step. There, that has something to do with persistence and determination. It has something to do with left brain thinking. How can I, if I, if I can't jump right to it, if I can't say, Don, let me bring you into town one day at your convenience into my studio and we'll take these pictures. I can't do that because we have none of the, um, the clothing. I seriously doubt if there are artists who can visualize or conceive of a great work of art completely done, finished, painted, perfect before they ever start. Van Gogh said great things are the result of a series of lesser things brought together. Somewhere in there is the secret of creativity. You bring a number of small things together, you employ uh, a number of things, left brain, right brain, determination, persistence, um, research, all kinds of stuff, but it's a number of small things brought together, uh, which is what I'm going to be talking about today, how that occurred exactly. Goethe, who wrote Faust, I think he spent 30 years writing it. There's a point in the book where Faust poses a question relative to art. And the question is, who is the creator and who is the created? What I have found, and this is very important to this series of photographs that I'm going to tell you about. What I've found is that at some point in the process of, a, of, of accomplishing a great photograph. At some point in the process, the art begins to create itself. A week or two went by, the breastplate kit came. I took it out uh, uh, to Don because he was going to uh, put the kit together, which when it was done, by the way, was a fairly complex, actually kind of work of art in itself. I took it out there. And so Don and I were talking and he says, you don't know anybody that, that has uh, uh, old Indian clothing, do you? And I'm going, no, uh -uh. no, I don't know a soul. Uh, one guy that was out there, the property owner, uh, 
uh, said, hey, I know a guy that's trying to sell some old Indian clothing and here's his phone number. And, and uh, I went back to my gallery and called him and he had sold it all. So boom, another brick wall. That evening, three o'clock in the morning, boom, I wake up and I'm thinking, I know somebody with old Indian stuff and and who it is, his name is Bruce Van Landingham. He owns the Sundog Gallery in Bozeman, Montana. And he is an expert on and specializes in old Indian artifacts. So I called up Bruce and very politely put it to him, something to the effect that here's what's happening. Do you happen to have any old Indian clothing that you might allow Don and I to use in a photo session? And Bruce is a good guy. He is, he is a really good guy. Uh, he said, you know what? I just got in a old Sioux war shirt. So why don't you bring Don over here and uh, we'll, I'll show it to you. So now keep in mind the trips involved here. I've been out to Paradise Valley twice now. Now I'm going to go out there again, pick up Don. No car, no phone. And we're going to go over to Bozeman, then I'll take Don home. So we went over to Bozeman and Don was just, he said something to the effect, very humbly too, that he would be honored. This, this war shirt was Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. It was a hundred and some years old, late 1800s. And Don said that he would be honored to wear that. We now have uh, some historic clothing. Uh, Don has agreed to be photographed. We already went through that. And we are now up to the first uh, let's call it a shoot. And so I make arrangements with Don uh, when it's convenient for him to be photographed, drive out to uh, Paradise Valley again. I think this is about my fourth trip out there. Uh, bring Don in, he, he wants to do it in the evening. So this is going to be an evening shot, gallery closed in my studio in the back of the gallery. So shoot number one, I go out to pick up Don and uh, this is left brain. He has a mustache. And I'm thinking, should I ask him to cut the mustache off? And then I'm thinking, no, I, I want to photograph Don. I don't want to photograph my version of Don. Another way to say that is Don is the Indian, not me. I'm the photographer, Don is the Indian. If he has a mustache, that's good enough. I didn't say anything about it. Uh, we came in, put the war shirt on, put the beads on, and had a, a really good photo session. Got a, got a good picture. And by the end of the session, I thought that was it. Everything worked great, it all came together. I would say two days later, my right brain came into play. It had, it had a, an idea it wanted to express. The mustache makes Don look like a French trapper from the late 1800s wearing a, an Indian war shirt, which they did quite often. And that kept, bothering me because it's not quite Indian. It brings a question into the picture for the viewer. A kind of a rule of photography, art photography thing, what, what does not add detracts. And I kept thinking that mustache detracts from the picture. This is really minor, minor picky shit, I admit it. Nevertheless, I couldn't get out of my head. So I called up Don, he had a phone by then, I think I told you that. Anyway, he had a phone by then and I called him up and I says, 
let me tell you what I think about our pictures. And I said something like, they're really good, but, and I, and I mentioned the mustache, and he says, well, no problem, I'll shave it off. And so I'm going, oh, cool, thanks, I appreciate that so much. We set up another, it's probably for a week later, we set up another shoot, that'll be shoot number two. Uh, he's gonna shave his mustache. We still have the war shirt, we still have the beads, everything's cool. And somewhere about that time, Don came up with an eagle feather. At that point, I learned something more about Indians. One eagle feather usually signifies a warrior, as opposed to a chief with a full war bonnet on. So he came up with an eagle feather. We have a war shirt, so everything is starting to fall into place. And I'm, and I'm thinking of uh, uh, shoot number two now. Okay, so now a big thing happens. I'm researching some Indian photographs just to get an idea of how to bring the war pipe into the picture. How can I get a hand in the picture? Stuff like that, normal old stuff. Sitting down, standing up, what's the pose? Okay, in the process of researching, uh, uh, old photographs of Assiniboine warriors, I come across two painters from the 1830s. This is way before photography. The da daguerreotype didn't come out until, I think it was 1850, 1840, something like that. Back in the 1830s, there were two painters that went to, uh, the, the, I should say came, because I'm in Montana, came to Montana to paint, among other things, Assiniboine warriors. And in researching uh, ideas for, for this uh, shoot number two now, I come across a George Catlin painting of an Assiniboine warrior from 1830. And holy crap, this guy has some something in his hair sticking up, wild looking thing. He had his whole forehead, and I think this one side of his face was painted red, had a hand in black painted like this. And then beads and stuff like that. And, I, and I'm, I'm, Stunned. I'm, I'm looking at that and I'm stunned. But anyway, I go on with the research. It comes up to shoot number two. And this time we got, oh, I would say from shoot number two. From shoot number one, we got one really good picture, but that kept bothering me. The mustache kept going off a little bit. Dawn was cool enough to go along with shoot number two, and further about the time, and by now, uh, Bruce Van Landingham at the Sundog Gallery over there is getting more enthused about these pictures. Don LaRock is getting more enthused about, now, now, let me translate that for you. Collaboration, ideas, a new dynamic, uh, I really think that somewhere right about shoot number two, the process changed. Right somewhere around that point, the art began creating itself. So shoot number two, one of the things that I do is show this Catlin painting, but Catlin painted the the Assiniboine warrior that I described to you, uh, I showed that picture to Don LaRock. I just said, what do you think of this? And he says, oh, that's a George Catlin painting. And I'm going, I'm kind of amazed because this, this is kind of an obscure 200 years, years ago uh, painter and he knows it right off the bat. And he begins explaining to me, uh, if I remember correctly, the red war paint and the, the thing sticking up out of his hair is and the eagle feathers and all the stuff, beads and stuff like that is, is basically just to scare the shit out of your opponent. 
but the hand. He explained the hand to me and he said, if you're a warrior and if you go into war, you do not want to embarrass yourself or demean yourself by screaming if you get wounded. And so how do you keep from, from screaming? And so the warriors back then, the Assiniboine anyway, created a symbol of a hand across their mouth to symbolically preclude them from screaming if they get injured. As a photographer, thinking of strong, 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 strong photos of strong, strong, strong people, I'm thinking, holy cow, you just can't, I'm not gonna, that's great, wonderful, marvelous. I shoot number two, uh, we do it, we get good war shirt, beads, peace pipe. Now we have an eagle feather here, warrior feather, and get a couple really good pictures. I shoot number two, uh, we do it, we get good war shirt, beads, peace pipe. Now we have an eagle feather here, warrior feather, and get a couple really good pictures. However, we talk about the possibility of shoot number three with full war paint. And I present this to Don very, I just kind of lay it on the table, kind of like I did with Bruce with the war shirt. I just lay the idea on the table. And if, and if they don't like it, it's real easy to back away from it. If they do like it, then they get to say, I like the idea and I want to participate or whatever. Don really liked the idea of full war paint. I think he understood what a statement, the dignity, the pride, the warrior aspect, and so we set up Shoot number three. We are now heading towards the third and what will become the final shoot. It is at this point that a whole bunch of things come together. One is the art has fully entered the picture. The art is fully involved in creating itself at this point. If you're paying attention to the progression of this series of photographs and the things that I've been telling you, you will understand that. There won't be any question in your head about what's going on. That's what's happening. The art is, is fully involved in creating itself. On the one hand, the Indian and what should I call it? Psyche, culture. What I see when I photograph an Indian, what, maybe I choose to see it, maybe I'm very perceptive, I'm not sure, but I see dignity, I see a warrior component, I see sorrow, and I see distrust. And I want those things to show in the picture. In this last photo session, dominant, of those things will be dignity, pride, warrior component. You're not gonna see any of the sorrow distrust in these pictures. On the other side of this, we have all of the things that are the components, the overview that I mentioned to you when we started this video. And if I can remember them all, it, it goes love of photography, a uh, love of a strong subject in good light, well photographed and well printed. Uh, we have persistence and determination. We have left brain and right brain, both in high gear. Uh, we have had some luck going along here. Those are the, those are the things that 
I walk into the third photo session with, along with the collaboration of Don LaRock, Rattling Thunder, in agreeing to the war paint, the breastplate, a choker, a warrior fe eagle feather. Okay, so we are now in uh, my studio. It's nighttime. Uh, this time I didn't have to go out and pick up Don. His girlfriend brought him in, who is a makeup artist and has agreed to put the war paint on Don, which is, I really, I, that was cool for her. I really appreciate that. She did a really good job. So anyway, we're, we're in the back room and we're in there and she brought a girlfriend with her. So there's two ladies, uh, there's Don and there's myself. And we're in the back room and, and to start with, it's, it's this guy in white people clothes, comes in, real nice guy, strong face. He used to be a biker, by the way, so he's got a few scars and a lot of character in his face. Uh, actually, I used to be a biker too, so we kind of, I don't know, I think we had a little bit of affinity for each other. That's how it started. And then, gradually the war paint is getting on there. Gradually the hand is being painted on. Gradually Don is getting into a the breastplate. His shirt is off. You can see his uh, uh, Sundance scars, which when he puts the breastplate on is covered up, so you won't see them in the photographs. Choker on, and I'm sitting there in the back room, and this has become surrealistic. I don't know if you can picture that. This. There are, there are th I'm gonna use the word normal people. There are three normal people in the background, and there is this primitive warrior. I'm gonna say savage. I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but holy cow, it's like a time warp. It was so, it was so fascinating. Okay, so there we are. Makeup's on, we're ready to go, except for one thing. When Don came in the door that evening, uh, prior to the makeup, prior, you know, all of that, he had this big plastic bag and, he, and, he, and he's joking. He said, I brought a surprise for you. And so he dumps the bag on the floor and opens it up and there's an elk skin in there. And I'm thinking that, here's what I'm thinking. This is the truth. I'm thinking, that's so cool. I love Don participating in that, in this. I, I, I love it that he's involved, that we're collaborating on this picture, that we have become the dynamics of this thing and become kind of catalytic in effect where everything is bouncing off. But I'm also thinking, what in the hell are we going to do with the elk skin? So anyway, we go in and we're shooting pictures and man, are we getting some good pictures. And somewhere in there, Don says, well, should I try the elk skin? And I'm thinking, I gotta be polite. I have to say, yeah, okay. So I say, yeah, okay, cool. Let's, let's try the elk skin. And Don goes and gets this, I should probably be saying rattling thunder now, stick with the Indian terminology. Don goes and gets this elk skin, wraps it around himself and son of a bitch, Six months of everything that I've been describing, of all the research, all the roadblocks, all of the trips all over the place, all of the late nights, all of the Sunday shoots, all of a sudden fell into place. And notice Notice that this is not me saying things like, oh, that elk skin would be wonderful, or oh, this would be wonderful, or oh, that would be wonderful. This is me sort of wobbling along through this, a little bit of left brain, a little bit of right brain, a little bit of persistence, a little bit of determination, a little bit of just keep it moving, a little bit of, if you can't think of 
of hardly anything to do, do the little dinky thing. You keep moving, move, 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 improve, improve. I'm as much a part of the process as in control of the process. And please pay attention to that because I guarantee you that that's that point when art begins creating itself, when all these things start falling together, when there's collab, that's when great art is created. And the final best, best, best pictures of this three photo shoots, six month long series, there ended up being almost uh, seven or eight really, uh, what should I say, substantial, compelling images, really strong images. And when Don put that elk skin on and I looked at it through the camera, man, that was the cherry on the frosting on the cake that did it. And that's it, that's the anatomy of a photograph.